in July, that is five months ago, I had talked about President Jomo Kenyatta trying to unite the Angolan, the then Angolan freedom fighters in 1974. I talked about them, but from July up to this time, some young people have been pushing me to talk about one specific uh, Angolan leader. If you compare him with the other two, uh, if you talk about the other two, you'll, you'll find that, uh, if you talk about the other two, you'll find that their story cannot even reach a quarter of what John S. Savimbi is or was. So I've been, uh, I, I am told there is, there is even a, a video game called John S. Savimbi. Uh, so I've been pushed and uh, I thought I, I should talk about John S. Savimbi. Uh, if you find that I've not talked about the other two, Holden Roberto and Agostino Neto, if, I, if I'll not talk about them, just understand that there is very little about them. Jones Malheino Savimbi was born on 3rd August 1934. If he were alive today, he would be 90 years. Eh? He was born on 3rd August 1934, which was on a Friday. He was from a tribe called Munhango, Munhango from Beira, province of Angola. His father was both a railway station master and a Protestant church pastor. He was uh, both a, a station master, railway station master, and a Protestant preacher. I don't know, hey, squeezy, anyway, even during my time, because um, I was born 20 something years after him. We used to have a very senior person who was used to be called station master who railways. I don't know whether they are still there. And that person used to be a very important person. So his father was called Lotte Savimbi. His father was called Lotte Savimbi. And his father was both a railway station master and uh, he, his, his father was both a station master at a railway and also a preacher with the Protestant church. Savimbi went to missionary schools. Savimbi went to local missionary schools. We mostly those run by Protestant, but some were run by Catholic. So he spent most of his school life in missionary schools. In 1958, at the age of 24, he won a scholarship to go to, to study in Portugal. While in Portugal, he met Dr. Agostino Neto. He met Agostino Neto. Dr. Agostino Neto is one of the three leaders who used to come to Kenya for peace talks. Agostino Neto was studying and Agostino Neto became the first president of Angola. By then, Kina Agostino Neto had started, uh, had started uh, MPLA. MPLA is a political party. The initials MPLA are in Portuguese. So if I tell you in English, uh, they may not fit in the way it is, but it is Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola. Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola. If we talk of it in Portuguese, maybe you could say uh, M Movement Popular the Liberation. Okay, but in English it is Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola. Uh, Agostino Neto, not Agostino Neto, Jones Savimbi joined MPLA 
and became a leader, a very senior leader of the MPLA youth wing. Just like uh, we have Kanu, those of you who are there in the 90s, we had a very active Kanu youth wing. We had a very active Kanu youth wing. So as Dr. Agostino Neto headed the MPLA political party, uh, Dr. Jones Sabimbi headed its youth wing department. I said he, he won a scholarship to study in Portuguese International School. Uh, school. But when he was in Portugal, the Portuguese intelligence were monitoring him because that is the time when the fight for Angola's uh, independence was there. So he, he left Portugal and went to Switzerland. He went to Switzerland where Portuguese and French communist parties uh, were sponsored him. From there he didn't even complete. He went and uh, he didn't even complete his first degree and started a second one, which was a social science and political degree in Phil Philbrick University in the USA. I can't pronounce it well. He went and studied there. So he was a leader of uh, MPLS poly, uh, youth, youth Wing. He, he used to say several times that the person who motivated him to join MPLA or even jo join political party was Mze Jomo Kenyatta. Mze Jomo Kenyatta. He started the youth wing of MPLA in September 1960. And so he was influenced by Jomo Kenyatta. And we can assume we can assume that uh, even though he influenced them, even though he influenced uh, Jomo Kenyatta influenced him to join uh, freedom fighting, he didn't at that time meet Jomo Kenyatta. But he met Tomboya. He met Tomboya. It is Tomboya who took him to Agostino Neto and and, uh, and, and and he became a robust member of the MPLA Youth Wing. Uh, he abandoned his medical degree in December 1961. Remember, he has always been referred to as Dr. Jones Savimbi. He has been referred to as Dr. Jones Savimbi because he studied medicine, but he abandoned it uh, in December 1961. And as I said, when he abandoned his uh, medicine degree, he went to Louisiana University, as I said, to study law and international politics. He rose through the ranks of UPA. UPA. Uh, UPA is the, what do you call? The youth wing of MPLA. He rose through the the, the, the MPLA, uh, what we call wing, the youth wing, which was called UPA, and he tried to lead MPLA short, in 1964. 1964, he, as, as the president or the leader of the UPA, which is the youth wing, he tried to wrestle the MPLA from Dr. Agostino Neto. But he couldn't do it. So he went and joined uh dr holden roberto he went and joined dr holden roberto in founding that was 1964. uh remember in 1964 he left mpla because he could not he could, he could not uh, it is there in kenya you had you hold an election just like uh, matiba had to leave uh, origin of eh, ford and studies for so he left that one and went and joined FNLA of Dr. Holden Roberto. Dr. Holden Roberto came from the north of Angola. Uh, and Sabine became from Central Eastern, Central Eastern, towards the east, but somewhere in the central. 
So you see, FNLA was very powerful. FNLA was very powerful because it controlled areas that are in the north and uh, areas in the central towards uh, the coast, towards the east. Uh, FNLA, which belonged to Dr. Holden Roberto, uh, the, the initials are in, uh, in Portuguese, but uh, I'll try to make it English. It's Front for the National Liberation of Angola. Then uh, the same year I could not agree with, with uh, Holden Roberto, and he started FNL, he started UNITA. That is the National Unit for Total Independence of Angola. Uh, he started it in 1964 while abroad, and he brought it to Angola or Africa in 1966. So he went and fought uh, when uh, Af Af Angolans were fighting Portuguese. They had three major political parties or, or freedom fighting groups. There is the MPLA, which was the initial one. Then there was FNLA by Dr. Holden Roberto. Uh, Holden Roberto, I said, he came from north of Angola. And he was a brother-in-law to Dr. Mobutu Seseseko. So being a brother, I don't know who married whose sister. But uh, he being a brother-in-law to Dr. to Mobutu Seseko and being sympathetic to F CIA and whatever, uh, equipments used to pass through Zaire, today is called DRC. So that is, uh, and that is why if you see the clothing that uh, Mobutu, Mo, uh, not Mobutu, the dressing that uh, Dr. Holden Roberto used to dress, he used to dress like a Zairean. Uh, the Zairean clothes are called abacos. Abacos. So they continued that way. And then uh, in 1975, it appeared that they were going to get independence, but they were so much uh, divided. They were so much divided. And Jomo Kenyatta took it upon himself to try and unite them. But uh, they could agree in Kenya, they could agree in Kenya and they could not, they, but when they went back, they used to fight. Just like uh, Museveni agreed with uh, uh, Tito Kelo Lutua in Nairobi, but when they went back to Kampala, he went to Loweri Triangle. So that is how they used to fight. And uh, when, they, when they used to meet Jomo Kenyatta, they used to meet him three places. But most of the places, I could say that um, 40% of the time they used to meet in Akuru, 40% they used to meet in Mombasa, and 20% in State House Nairobi. When they used to stay in Nakuru, there is a certain hotel. By then, by that standard, that hotel used to be very good. It used to be the, the highest standard of that time. Uh, and they used to they used to high uh, I don't know whether it is the Kenya government that used to pay for them or anything, but they used to use a particular hotel. So my viewer who is in Nakuru, or who frequents Nakuru, there is a, a hotel called Angola. That is where they used to stay most of the time. So it was nicknamed Angola. Uh, when these people are doing it, the CIA had the CIA was financing two liberation movements. It was financing the FNLA in the north and the UNITA in the central eastern. Uh, you see, and, and again, it was doing it clandestinely. And you see with American uh, finances, it is so much controlled. It is so much controlled that the money was coming too little, too late. And it was going to two groups. But when you find that uh, MPLA was supported by two different countries, the USSR, which today which broke up and today we can call it Russia, was supporting MPLA. It was financing and everything. And then Cubans, Cubans sent there its uh, military. So it is just like. Uh, I could, I, I would be, I would not be wrong if I said 
that uh, Angola did not gain independence, but it is Cuba that overthrew the Portuguese government and handed over the government to, to MPLA. So there was a guerrilla war for quite some time, a long time, until, uh, you know, peacemakers don't get tired. Eh? Peacemakers don't take, get tired. One time, the uh, FNLA, first of all, died just a natural death. We don't even know whether Holden Roberto is still alive. We don't know whether FNLA is still there or anything. But the major problem now became between uh, UNITA and the problem now became UNITA and uh, MPLA. But uh, international, uh, when the international peacemakers tried to join them together, walijaribu, wakajaribu, occasionally they would agree, occasionally they would not agree. So there were times when uh, Sabimbi would be based in the, in the capital. Uh, you know what peacemakers nowadays do? is that if two groups are disagree, they say that those who are holding the, 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 the seat, the state house, uh, provides the president, and the other one, the, the, the gorilla one, provides the vice chairman. It happened in Uganda, Lutua and uh, Museveni. It uh, happened in um, South Sudan. But in South Sudan, it was this way. Already Salva Kir had a vice president. So Rick Machar had to come in, in a new position of senior vice president. Even in Kenya, it happened that uh, Raila could not be made vice president because already Watermelon had already been made, Kalonzo Musioka had already been made the vice president. So they had to create the position of executive prime minister. So it happens that way, that uh, whoever is holding the state house is allowed to be the president and the other one is crafted too. Nusumkate style. So they used to have Nusumkate style there. But then there was an election. There was an election where uh, there was an election where uh, MPLA rigged. When they rigged, uh, UNITA went to the eastern central area and to the eastern central area and started a guerrilla war. Then there was a time when it was uh, international people came and they said that uh, they should try to unite these people. They should try to unite these people so that they become, they form again one government. Uh, John Savimbi sent his vice president, uh, his party's vice president, plus uh, the, the, the person who used to uh, who used to deal with foreign affairs issues. So they, 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 they went, and when they went there, they arrived in the uh, Angolan capital, uh, where Luanda. Siju kwa nini kwa nasao Luanda, and then you see Luanda in Kenya, kwa nyore. So if, as they, as when they landed in Luanda, they met with the military people who shot them and killed them. So um, Savimbe refused he said that uh, death till the last person. And they were fighting until uh, 22nd February, uh, 22nd February 2002, when uh, Angolan government overran the camp where uh, he was. Actually, if you Google to find out which, which African leader was killed badly, uh, I think him, and Samuel Do, Samuel Do, who was the sergeant, master sergeant Samuel Do of uh, Liberia, they were inhumanly killed. So he was killed, and he was buried where he, uh, at the site where he was killed. But later on, with the new, uh, with, you know, Uchungu, yeah, when you stay for quite some time, you have differences with other people, you have hatred or whatever. Uh, diminishes with the time. I may differ with you, but my grandchild and your grandchild will say, why should we differ about our grandparents whom we didn't know, whom we didn't even meet? So you find with the time, tension usually ceases. So these people, tension ceased and the Angolan uh, 
government agreed to rebury him. He was given a rebarrio on 1st uh, June, Madaraka Day, 1st June 2019, and he was given a full military and state barrio. Uh, you may, if you see any picture of uh, Dr. John Savimbi, you'll find that uh, he used to like uh, barrets and he used to, he never shaved his, uh, he never shaved his uh, beards. It used to be like those one of the, uh, what do you call, ayatollahs. So for quite some time, I think it is even still that way even today, that you find that a person with bushy beard is referred to as Savimbi. As Savimbi. It, is, it has gone there for quite some time, and that is the much I can talk about Savimbi. Uh, for young Kenyans, uh, I know you have given me a lot of things to say. Uh, just be patient. Uh, you, you, you can see that the story of uh, John Savimbi, I started getting requests in August, and now it is November. So I'll cover those things because there is no need. Uh, I'm in my mid 60s. There's no need that if I, I t there's no need for me to take uh, all my information to the grave. Furthermore, when you people, there are those things like this ones. They are in my mind, off head, but I, it is in my unconscious mind. So when you provoke me to uh, uh, record such things, that is when I uh, find myself. In a position, I find myself in a position to remember. Uh, the brain is like what? There is certain machines, yeah, even engines. Car engines, if you don't, if you park your vehicle there and you, you don't race it for some time, uh, the engine knocks, isn't it? So you, you may think that you are gaining a lot from what you are requesting me to, to upload. But in reality, you are jogging my mind. And for that, I'm grateful. Thank you.